All right, so let's take a look at the long-awaited feature where Claude's finally joining the club and doing internet live search and scraping capability. I've tested it just a little bit, like the New Mexico Lobos versus the Michigan State. So I'm from New Mexico. So we made it to the second round of the NCAA men's uh, college basketball tournament. And so you do have to go into your settings section to actually come over here and go into settings. And you'll want to come down here and you'll make sure that this web search is now turned on. And so this is a uh, Claude can search the internet to provide more up to date and relevant responses. Claude will automatically determine when to use web search if the topic requires current information. Web search is only available when using Claude 3.7 Sonnet. So I'm not sure if you get 3.7 Sonnet on the free plan or not, but we're going to go over here and start a new chat. I'm going to just demonstrate who won Lakers game. The other night. I don't know if they played last night or the other night, but we're just going to go with that and see what Claude can come up with for us. So I believe the Los Angeles Lakers played recently, but I don't have specific information about their most recent game. Would you like me to search for the last Lakers game result for you? Yes. Cool. So it logically kind of said, hey, well, I don't know. They played a lot of games. Which one are you talking about? So now it's saying I'll search for the latest Laker game result for you. It found, you know, all those different results. I'll search for the latest right here. And you can see these are the, um, we're going to go take a look at this right here in a minute. But based on my search, I found that the Los Angeles Lakers most recently played against the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Cavaliers won with a final score of 134 to 110. And you can actually see the cited source right here. I love this. This kind of reminds me of perplexity in a way, the Los Angeles Lakers live scores and a schedule. So you can actually go over there and look at that. Additionally, it appears that the Lakers also played against the Orlando Magic yesterday, losing 118 to 106. So they're actually on a losing streak right now, probably the worst time that you can. Now, I'm definitely not a Lakers fan, but they are a very, very popular team. Another thing I want to do, so they've cited these sources where they're getting this information. Uh, and then we can click over here and see what sources they've also went and gathered. So there's like a million sources that it can use, right? And so we have StatMuse over here. It actually decided way down the line over here, it actually used StatMuse right here, the Lakers' last five games box scores. Um, over here, it used a Sofa a Score or, yeah, Soft. So uh, score. Yeah, I think that's what that is. And we can come back over here and look for that source over here, which is the first source. So it actually did a really good job. So how could we actually now that we have this out of the way, it's 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 working like chat GBT, like like perplexity. Now, I haven't even I got to be completely honest with you guys, because there's so many AI writers out there. Do I really need to use a deep seek? I, of course, you guys are probably waiting. Like, how come David hasn't made a video on deep seek? It's because I don't jump on every trend. Now, last time, like when ChatGB, ChatGPT came out years ago, I made a video about how to use ChatGPT for blogging, and I get, ended up getting over 40,000 views on that video. Like, as a YouTuber, it does make sense to jump on trends. DeepSeek, I've already kind of missed that trend. It's been popular for a couple months now, but I'm not that impressed. It's just another Claude. It's just another ChatGPT, right? And it just got really, really famous overnight really popular. But at the end of the day, it's just a large language model that can scrape the web and do really cool things, right? And so I already have my favorite. And I've made that very clear to you guys that Claude is my favorite. It just it just works. And it has a very easy to use UI. I love the projects feature. I use it all the time. And I just really like how the interface works and just how the simplicity I love how I can go and grab a bunch of content and and do clipboards at clipboards a when you have a, a large amount of content or text instead of having to paste it all into this box right over here which just looks really sloppy like a chat GBT I'm surprised they haven't figured a way to deal with it Claude uniquely allows you to you know paste and you have like clipboards and stuff like that so it's just been the tool of of, of use for me that I've ended up it's, it's, it's my favorite that uh, you, you're, you're going to end up having a tool that you end up using the most and that is your favorite. Now, I don't really know if, if I was only using free versions, ChatGPT probably gives more away for free and I'm not, it has more capabilities, right? It can and search the web and stuff for free and do a lot of different things. There were, up until this point, I've always said, hey, if I need to do like 
look for current events or live web scraping, or I need more capability with my, with my, what I'm trying to do with my tasks, then ChatGPT still was a clear winner. But when it comes to writing blog posts or doing coding for your website or anything like that, Claude has been my go-to tool and it's my primary tool of use on a daily basis. So I'm excited that this uh, tool actually now has the live web scraping. So then I kind of feel like there's nothing that Claude really can't do at this point, right? Because you can build your own projects and your own tools. And we have a bunch of different tools in here that I build and use myself. Um, You can give it specific instructions, give it specific databases and knowledge bases in order to do a great job for you. And now it can also search the web. So pretty dang cool stuff. I actually want to um, create like a project that's going to automatically go out there and search things for us and so forth. So there's so many things that we can do. Probably not going to show that in this video, but what I do want to do is I want to maybe see how we could go out and maybe like write an article. Okay. So actually let's, let's go into, we're going to go into a project and we'll go into like a learn wire review post from a YouTube video. Let's click on this because this is my project, right? So this is where I wrote my subscriber right over here, a review and put it on my website and it's ranking. This stuff just works, but you can see, and there's actually a new layout right over here. And so instead of it all just in one column, we have three columns here so we can, we can, you know, see the, a lot easier. These are very subtle kind of UI improvements where now we're looking at these little boxes right here. And I actually think that's super cool. It looks like you can actually click on multiple and delete them or select them all. So they, they're adding these, these subtle improvements to the UI and functionality. I like that as well. I would really like to be able to click in here and actually double click in here and make changes. Now that's something that would be super cool. Like if I wanted to add a word to my AI bands word list, I can't do that. So they need to add that ability to just push update right over here. So we can come in here and update this text and push the update button. Instead, you have to copy all this and then go and, and, and kind of, you know, recreate, delete and then recreate it. But we have all this set up right over here. Um, and let's just see if we could do something really cool. So let's go over to, let's just say, let's go over to LearnWire and we'll go to something that we, actually something that we haven't posted. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take my transcript. So this is my video, my transcript, and I make that very clear in my videos now because I've actually been flagged for this before. So I'm only using my video on LearnWire. This is my video. I should have full rights to get my own transcript. But I'm going to go and grab my transcript over here, show transcript, and then I'm going to go and just grab it. Okay, so we're going to go and grab the transcript. So we have all of the knowledge and the, you know, the, the facts, the, the real review of someone that actually goes out there and spends an hour doing a video and doing a deep dive on a software. We're going to go and take this transcript right over here. Wow, this is massive. And of course, they conveniently don't have a copy button. Of course, there's some other tools I could use, but I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. So we're going to come in here, we're going to go in and I'm going to paste that in. And this is what I'm talking about, about the clipboard. How amazing and brilliant, such a simple design, but so, so powerful. We have all these other ones too: GitHub, Google Drive, capture screenshot, all kinds of cool stuff that you can do. But this is still my favorite feature of Claude, being able to paste a massive thousands and thousands of words. And it just does this little tiny, neat clipboard. And you know that now you're, you're looking at this and it has the instructions. It has the database over here. And then it also has all of the database of my transcript. I'm not done yet though. What I want to do is I want to also go over here and instead of having to go in here and do a control A and copy all this, I'm actually going to just grab the URL here from AppSumo and we'll come back over here. I'm going to say full 1500. I don't know if it's going to be able to hit 1500 words, but we're going to try write a full 1500 word review article for my uh, review. Follow instructions from the um, project over override word count to 1500 because I, I don't know what the instructions are over here. I might have said a thousand words, 800 words, whatever. And then I'm going to say also for more information about Keywordly, here is a great source you can use. 
and we're going to say right here, boom. Make sure to use this source to add a few real customer, something like that, right? So then we'll see how it does like that. And then also, actually, I'm just going to leave it like that. We're going to say go, and we're going to see what Claude can do for us. We'll be right back. Okay, so it is writing. So it says, I'll, comp I'll create a comprehensive 1500 word review of Keywordly based on your instructions and the information provided. I'll make sure to follow your writing guidelines and include relevant internal links in Forest Green. Actually, wow. So I've actually really updated my, my prompting in there. It didn't say anything about the, you know, the customer testimony. So we'll see if it catches that. So Keywordly review, new AI keyword tool that scrapes. Keywordly is a fresh en entry into the keyword research tool space, offering an AI powered approach to finding profitable keywords and content ideas. This tool promises to help you uncover hidden content opportunities by scraping platforms like Reddit and Quora alongside traditional keyword sources. Let's dive into this newly released tool and see if it's worth adding to your SEO toolkit. So Keywordly, sales page, and info. So we go over all this. We go over the price and all that. That's why I love doing it this way. Claude is just the best at this. This is in like, so we do have this like HTML type of code right here not quite in uh, markdown. So we will see how that plays out when we actually go paste it into our site. There's a notable limitation with the lower tier plans. We have the pricing plans right there. Looks accurate. Just a little, you know, interested or concerned about the coding for the, the website. But when we hover over here, best AI writing tools, it is actually, look down here to the lower left, it's actually inserting internal links, which is super cool, because we get that from, I can go show you, we actually uh, uploaded a CSV file. All right, so we're going to keep going, keep looking at this, keyword research tools, standard keywords research, boom, 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 topical map, keyword, final thoughts, um, rating, I'm not sure if it added in what the, the customer testimony, so we're going to go and look at that in a minute. It did do a really good job going over the entire review. And then also we'll just go and look at how many words it actually wrote for us right here. We'll paste that in. And now we've reached a point where Claude can actually write a 1400 word article in one go. Now that is super, super game changing. Up until this point, we could never get more than about 800 words, no matter what we did with prompting. So that is actually extremely impressive, almost twice as much content being able to being, be written. So super cool. There's our meta description. But OK, so some users have found the value in the tool despite limitations. So as someone just starting out with keyword research, Keywordly has been a great affordable option. The long tail feature. So it did add. It added two people, James and Megan. I'm not sure. Let's go and actually see if there is any kind of review. Maybe it just made those up. I don't even know. Maybe there wasn't even a, um, any reviews. So three reviews will come over here. And I'm just going to scroll through. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like it just made those ones up. It didn't actually use these. Okay, so yeah, it didn't actually find a reviews. We could go back and prompt it and say, you know, you could say something like, why did reviews. There are three real ones on the source I sent. So we'll go like that and we'll see if we can get it. You're absolutely right. I apologize for making up user testimonials instead of using the real ones from the source. That was a mistake on my part. Boom. Okay. So you're absolutely right. I need to search again. So we have the AppSumo right there and we're going to see if it can do a better job for us. So this is why you don't just want to, um, just write things like this and go and paste it. it you could probably get ra ratings, or I'm sorry, you could probably get rankings. This right here is not going to, probably not going to be a big, big deal. But these are the little things that start adding up in your content. If you let them all go, then suddenly your content becomes less helpful, less accurate, less factual, less trustworthy. So that's why you do want to look for this kind of stuff. And then I, as the prompt engineer, should have said, hey, the reviews should be an H3 so we could easily identify them and stuff like that, right? So um, it's only as good as your prompting, but then you also need to look through it like I just did and edit and review like a real person and go in here and actually identify that these are not even real people. So let's see what it did for us. 
I should not have used Fabricated. That was incorrect for the updated version of your article. I'll remove any fake testimonials. Would you like me to revise the review article based on the accurate information we have, removing the Fabricated? And right here we will say yes. And then it's going to go out there and fix the article for us and we'll take a look. All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here. Scroll back up. Yeah, and I can't find... So here's the paragraph where it's basically saying that it didn't find them. So that's a little bit disappointing. It's super accurate. I mean, look at this 3.5 out of five stars. Um, like the review and the writing just couldn't be any better. There's just no way that this, like the information that it's getting is unique to me and my review, which is super cool. What you could do, what you'd still want to do maybe in this case is just come down here and grab these people's reviews. And so I would just go like this. I would say I'd actually grab this showing three of three reviews and we would go like this and we would just say something like that. Actually, I'd grab the whole thing and let them kind of defend themselves as well. And then I would come back into Claude and I would say, you were not able to scrape the reviews on the source page. So I did it for you here. They are make a section with a H3 heading for current customer reviews. Here is the data. And then I would paste this in right here and push enter. And now it's going to go out there and thank you for providing the actual customer reviews. I'll add them to the article with H3 headings as requested. So I want to say, hey, guys, what do you guys think about this? It obviously can go and search the web, identify who won the game last night. You can use Claude as a search engine. I'm not saying that it's better than ChatGPT. Actually, that would probably be a little, a little asinine to do that because ChatGPT has been doing this for like a year or two years with the web scraping and all the functionality. So I wouldn't say that, the, that this is better than ChatGPT or better than Perplexity. If you, between the three tools, if you could only pick one, for me personally, I probably would pick Claude because of its writing capabilities, and now it does have that search ability. The fact that, that we can write a 1,500-word article now, we've never been able to do that with Claude. The writing is on point. It follows instructions very, very well, and now we can also have it scrape the web. What do you guys think about the new feature? Do you think that this is you know, only going to improve and get better? Also, if you've made it this far in the video, leave a comment if you have any ideas of videos that I could make with Claude, using Claude in unique ways and using the scraping feature or the web search feature. If you have any ideas like, hey, do this or do that, then I'd be glad to make those creative videos for you. Some new ways, some fresh ideas from you guys on how we can actually use Claude AI to our advantage now that it has its power packed with Sonnet 3.7. The writing is better than it's ever been. The following of the instructions is, is very, very good when it comes to like projects and all this project settings. Yes, it didn't do a very good job at the web scraping and the second kind of look at it with, you know, we provided the link and it, and it didn't, wasn't able to do it quite as good as we wanted it to. I want to come over here. So here's the customer review, current reviews. Here's what it looks like. Looking at the first AppSumo reviews for Keywordly, there's a mixed reception. User blah, 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 gave it four stars, praising how it simplifies keyword research, especially boom. However, they noted that their tier one plan feels more like a free plan with real features starting out tier two and mentioned the high credit burn rate of four credits. On the more critical side, user blank rated it only two stars. And then the keyword elite team has been responsive to feedback. Noting they've already reduced the credit burn from four to two credits per search based on user input. They also mentioned they're working on improvements like bulk keyword selection and increasing the number of keywords returned from Reddit and Quora searches. So they, this is great, right? You're still kind of defending them, but then also showing the real user feedback. And that's great. That's, that's what puts together a really, really useful piece of content that you could go out there and put on your website. So super cool stuff. I just wanted to show you guys the search feature is here with Claude. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.